This video is brought to you by Clusterfix. Uh, today we're going to demonstrate on how to repair the terminals on an instrument cluster connector. Um, what happens with these a lot, this one's cut out of the vehicle so we can demonstrate it. Um, these plug into the back of the instrument cluster and what happens many times is the terminals are real small, they get fatigued and you'll lose your power and ground connection to the cluster and then you'll have cluster problems. Um, so what I'm going to demonstrate is how to remove these terminals from the connector effectively without damaging them and uh, repair them so you can uh, put your cluster back in service. Um, a few tools you're going to need. Um, I'm using a terminal removal tool. You may not have access to that. Um, if you're careful, you can all use, also use like a T-pin, a sturdy T-pin. Um, to get in there and release a little locking lever. Uh, a little screwdriver comes in handy and a little pair of needle nose pliers. Um, so first of all, you'll, you need to identify with a wire diagram which wires you'll need to remove, but I'm going to tell you um, the most common ones here. We're working on, uh, we'll either be working on a 99 new body style, the 2002 will have one color, and um, the 2003 on up um, to 2006, early 2007, we'll have another color generally. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate here on how to get it apart. Um, like this one, I need to remove the terminals from this top end. So you'll need to take your little screwdriver here and pop this little um, locking piece out here. Mine's blue. I need to remove this top row of terminals here. And on the uh, 99 Silverado, Sierra, Yukon, um, Tahoe, Escalade, you may run into the same colors here. And uh, these terminals that you're going to be looking at on those are going to be, um, uh, they're two pink wires or the ignition power source into the cluster. And you'll see if you look on the back of this connector it says B1 um, it says A here so you'll be able to identify which ones you need to take out um, so you can go go by your color wire and you can go by the terminal location um, so on the uh, 99 series to 2002 generally your two main power wires are going to be A10 and B6 so you'll locate those on there and then the one ground is the A6 and um, that's, that color is black. And um, the uh, 2003 on up, you're looking at a, a pink wire that's B9 and a uh, orange wire that's B11, and that's the two power. And actually on the 2003 on up, they're all right next to each other. You got two powers and a ground. There's a space there where there's no wire at all. And the ground wire on this one is black with a white tracer. Um, so this is 2003 on up, and those are really the only ones you hardly ever have to worry about. I think the current flow causes some fatigue, so they're a little troublesome to uh, um, cause in your, what, on the 99 to 2002, generally, your cluster just won't work at all. And if it's not working at all, and you can get behind your instrument cluster and wiggle the connector and get things to come on, then there's a good chance you got a terminal problem in here. On the uh, later ones, 2003 on up, um, most of the time what you're looking at there is if the uh, cluster, none of the gauges work, but the back lighting works, that light illuminate the gauges, um, then that's an instrument cluster problem internal in the cluster. But if you got no gauges and no back lighting for the gauges, then you most likely you have a power ground issue, um, or you've got the uh, connector problem. And once again, you can wiggle it and uh, see if things come off and on. If it does, then you know you need to take your connector apart. So this particular one's off of 2003. So after you've got that blue terminal um, securing piece out of there, there's a large square hole and a small square hole. Don't stick anything in the small square hole. That's the sensitive terminal part that actually plugs into your cluster. The larger one here is the one you'll see a little metal tab that rests on one side of this large opening. And that's the lock release to, to release these terminals. So I'm going to stick my terminal release tool in there. 
I stick it down in there and you kind of wiggle it around and you release a little locking finger like I have on this. So here we have the terminal. You can see there's four um, little wafer spring type contact points and um, I go around those real carefully because they stretch out so they're um, they're not making good contact on your pin. So I'll go and I'll gently push the sides in. Start at the bottom, work to the top, just gently squeeze it in and then go to the other side. Gently squeeze it in a little tighter. You don't want to damage it or distort it. So now I got a, a tighter fit. And then once you do that, um, you want to bend your locking terminal back down just a little bit so it'll lock back in place once you stick it in it's probably best not to take more than one wire out at a time so you don't mix up the locations then you just stick it back in the way it came and you'll kind of hear it lock in place make sure it locks in place and you can't pull it out um, once you've done that, um, most of the time, like I said, there's just three terminals, two powers, and one ground that you have to worry about for the problems that I described there. Um, you can do similar repairs to like the Trailblazer and the Envoy um, to those clusters as well. But um, this is just a demonstration how to get this repaired in the field um, so you don't have to uh, miss, you, a lot of them are misdiagnosed, instrument clusters are misdiagnosed because the problem is actually in the connector itself. Uh, but if you have any more questions, you can give us a call at 509-366-9009. And you can also visit our website at www.clusterfix.net. Thank you.